Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Job chapter 1. Now, for those of you who have read the story of Job, you know there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and there was that man, the Bible says, was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And you remember the story very well. God is boasting over Job. Have you considered Mame, Job. The Bible says, for he what? He's a perfect and upright man. He escueth evil. And Satan tells him, does he fear you for nothing? Praise the Lord Jesus. Have you not placed a hedge around him and around all that he has? Now Satan says, stretch forth and touch him. And break that hedge of him and everything. And then you will see how he will curse you. Praise the Lord. And the twelfth verse says, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thine power. Only upon himself put not thine hand. So Satan went forth from the prince of the Lord. Are you hearing me? He told him, Everything that he has is now. I've, I've, I've allowed you to, to, to touch everything that he has. But don't touch his body. Praise the Lord. And then all of you know the story. His animals died. His kids died. Praise the Lord. In the second chapter again job chapter 2 again the bible says there was a day when the sons of god came to present themselves before the lord and again satan came also among them to present himself and the next verse says and the lord said unto satan from whenceforth comes down son and answered the lord from going to and fro in the earth and from walking upon and down it and the lord said unto satan has thou considered my servant job of course he has lost his children he has lost his animals but god is still saying have you considered what you do you see what I told you? Now the Bible tells us, a perfect man and a bright man, one that feareth God and escueth evil, and he still holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yeah, all that a man has, he will give his life. Did you hear that? Skin for skin, all that a man has, he will give his what? His life. And the next verse says, but put forth thine hand now, touch his bone, his flesh, and he will cast thee to thy face. And the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, and it is, he is in thine hand. But he told him, Don't touch his life. Give me the message of that. The message of the Bible says, And the Lord said, Alright, go ahead, you can do what you like with him, but mind you, don't kill him. Praise the Lord Jesus. Don't kill him. That is why the Bible says that passion, it is the death of his beloved. There's a way God hates it when you die before time. Somebody say amen. amen. Everybody who dies, he doesn't die. Some people think that everybody who dies, dies in the will of God. It's the will of God. That's how God has decided that you die at, at a certain age. Hallelujah. You're like our brothers. They say, Inna lillahi. Wa inna lillahi. Huradi'un. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. They believe that everything comes from the Lord. When sickness comes, ah, it is the Lord. Praise God. But if you're a Bible reader, you realize that before the Lord grants permission to Satan, Job had broken the hedge already. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that he that breaketh the hedge, the serpent shall bite. And he that diggeth the pit, the Bible says they shall fall therein. Job broke the hedge of his life many years ago. But the devil was so used to the hedge being on Job, that even when the hedge broke, Job, they, the devil thought Job still had the hedge. Am I clear to that level? How do I know that? Because the Bible says the Lord tempteth. No man neither tempted, neither is he tempted by evil. Satan cannot tempt God. Neither can God tempt you with evil. 
Do you believe it? So he says, let no man say when he's tempted that, oh, I'm tempted of the Lord. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. You know, there's no way the devil tempted God to afflict Job, and neither could he tempt Job by afflicting him. Otherwise, if God did that, then he would have been responsible and guilty of having tempted who? I mean, being tempted either by Satan to afflict Job, or having tempted Job. But the truth of the matter is, Job broke the heads of his life. He says, for the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. He says, for I was not in quiet. I was restless. I, I, I continued speaking. And he says, and trouble befell me. Why does trouble befall him? Why? Because every time Job used to sit there, he used to think, ha, ah, my children can die from here. We have people like that. They call you on phone and say, now, now what's the problem? Huh? Hello? <laughs> Some of you on the other end of the line, you always expect what? Give me the amplified of that. He says, for the thing which I greatly feared, okay, ha- comes upon me, present continuous. For the thing which I greatly fear comes upon me, present continuous. And that of which I'm afraid of befalls me, present continuous. I was not, no, uh, I was not, oh, I'm not at ease, no, had I, oh, have I rest, no, as I, oh, am I quiet, yet travel came and still comes upon me. Listen, if you continue meditating about everything you're going through, if you continue meditating about things that are going to happen to you, the negatives, I promise you, you will reap what you sow. The parable is in Luke 8, 11, that the parable is that the seed is the word of God. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, sow the word of God in your spirit. Tell them one more time and tell them, sow the word of God in your spirit. Somebody say hallelujah. So, Job had a problem. One simple problem. He is the kind who used to sit there and expect calamity. And there are many people here who are like that. Every one minute of their life, they are thinking, now this is going to happen. Now that is going to happen. Now this that this has happened, also that is going to happen. Now this is going to happen, also that is going to happen. I think even the other one is going to happen. You always sit in a place where every time you're expecting to fail. You're expecting. Somebody comes and says, now pastor, I need counseling. Why is it that for me, every time bad things happen to me, present, continuous, past and future? In other words, you possessed it as a nature. That for you, you always have to be hit. Some of you, you have understood it that way. I have a sermon on that. It's called breaking the hedge. Listen to it. But these few minutes, I only needed to give a starting idea for those of you who don't know the sermon and don't know at least this truth. So I repeated for you. Now I'm going into my point tonight. The Bible says in Matthew, chapter 10, verses 28, he says, For fear not that w- them which kill the body, but are not able. The Bible says to kill the what? The soul. And the Bible says, But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body. Praise the Lord. Fear them not which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. God tells Satan, touch everything. Okay, I've even allowed you to afflict him. (laughs) But don't kill him, boss. I'll kill you. You understand what I'm saying? Don't kill him. That is in my power to do, not you. Let me tell you, saints. eh? (laughs) If you want to understand grace, it is revealed more so even in the Old Testament than many people can assume. Job has broken the hedge, but God is ready to say, when Satan tells him, touch him, Job says, God tells Satan, okay, don't touch his body, at least. He has broken the hedge, but don't touch his body. Are you hearing me? And then at a particular point, he tells him, don't touch his body. And the guy does whatever he has to do, still fails to get the guy. The guy is still faithful in the thing. And the guy says, okay, now give me his body. And God knows this guy can kill Job. Praise the Lord. But you see, if Job broke hedges off his life, and God still regarded him perfect. Are you hearing me? The Bible says he rejoices over us with singing. God does not boast of you because you're really perfect. No. He boasts of you because you've embraced grace. Job was not perfect to the point that he broke the hedge of his life. Are you hearing me? 
But even though he used to break hedges of his life, God still considered him perfect and upright. He even busted over him. Yet we know that Job broke the hedge of his life. Praise the Lord. He had to tell the devil, no, behold, all that he has is in your hands. I have not removed the hedge. No, you see, the hedge left long ago. Job screwed up, but he's still perfect. He's still perfect to what? To me. Somebody say amen. Even in that instance, it is okay. Touch his body, but don't kill him. That's how much God cares. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And now the Bible tells us, don't fear them which kill the what? But they cannot destroy the what? The soul. In fact, the literal word there in the Hebrew, for don't kill him, it's don't destroy his soul. Praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. In Matthew, when he tells them fear not, if you begin the whole Matthew 10, this one has an instruction to his disciples. Remember, he tells you, for I send you a sheep among his wolves. Do this and do that. Whatever I reveal to thee in darkness, reveal in light. You see, everything, not the darkness of the darkness, but in, in, in what? In secret. Praise the Lord. All of these were instructions to the believers. To you and I. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. That is the whole Matthew chapter 10. He was telling us the way we should live. And part of the instruction, the cardinal instruction. Listen, God doesn't appeal to us not to fear. God commands us not to fear. Tell your neighbor, man, a definite command. Not to be afraid. Of anything in this life. When you understand this. <laughs> when you understand this. Let me show you something. Exodus. Chapter 10. And verses 1. The Bible says. And the Lord said unto Moses. Go in unto Pharaoh. For I have hardened his heart. And the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him. Are you hearing me? Now, of course, because all of you know that the Hebrew language confuses a lot on the permissive and causative clauses. This is not God causing Paul, I mean, uh, causing Pharaoh to harden his heart. This is God allowing Pharaoh to harden his heart. This is God seeing Satan hardening Pharaoh's heart, and he allows it. So it's more of a, a, a permissive clause, not a causative. But because the Hebrew does, does, does not have permissive clauses, it always uses causative clauses instead of permissive. Agreeable? That you know, general knowledge. Now, the Bible says that, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart, and the heart of servants, that I might show these my signs before him. And the next verse says, and that thou mayst tell him in the ears, tell them, sorry, in the ears of thy son and thy son's sons, what thing have I wrought in Egypt? And my sons, which, my sons which I have done among them, that ye may know how that I am the Lord. Wait a minute. God allows Pharaoh to be hard, that he will show his power. <laughs> Maybe I'm preaching to them. God allows a certain guy to give you a headache. Hallelujah. That he might expose his power. God allows your boss to give you warning letters. That he may expose his power. God allows men to write about you in the newspapers. That he may expose his power. God allows your auntie and uncle. He could have killed them before they bewitched you. But no. He lets them even do witchcraft. That he may display. That is why I tell people, let them bring it on. Hallelujah. When people open war on you, don't say, oh God, deliver us from our enemies. No, 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 no. God has allowed it to happen. Because in one way or another, there is something that will happen in your life. For the glorification of God. That is why I don't get shaken when men say things about me. I don't get shaken when I'm hated. I don't get shaken when I'm persecuted. I know what God is up to. Point of information. When God allows it, it's for your good. Tell somebody when God allows it, it must be for my good. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. 
if God allowed Job's affliction, if God allowed you to have HIV, if God allowed you to have cancer, God, He allowed. James. <laughs> James chapter 5 verses 11. The Bible says, For behold, we count them happy which endure. He says, Ye have heard, the Bible says, of the patience of Job, and have seen, the Bible doesn't say his end. The end of the Lord. Oh, you didn't get me, did you? You have seen. Give me the message version of that. He says, He says, what a gift life is to those who stay on the course. You've heard of the course of Job staying power. And you know how God brought it all together for him at the end. You know! You know! Why? Because that's because God cares. And he cares right to the very down last detail. Your food, your money, your clothes, your children, your job, your ministry, your business, your eyes, your ears, your house, your car, your carpet, your... So, James says, you know, what's your money? Hallelujah. I know it's sad to tell somebody when they're going through sadness. And they've lost their job. And they're all weeping. And then you turn to the person and tell him, uh uh-uh, brother, you know. You know. You know how it's going to end. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I know how it's going to end. Tell somebody I know how my story is going to end. Tell them I know how I'm going to end. I know. If he allowed it to happen, my end is of him. You didn't hear me. If he allowed it to happen, my end is of him. Are you called of God? Are you really called of God? Are you really called of God? Your end is of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, your end is of the Lord. I don't know how to convince you. Your end is of the Lord. You will see that in the end, it will be God. My end is of the Lord. Tell yourself, my end is of the Lord. God could not have allowed this stuff to shoot you without knowing how to get you out. The Bible tells us of Samson. How he kills tens of thousands of Philistines with a jawbone of an ass. And he beats and beats and beats and beats and beats to the end. After killing all of them, the Bible says he becomes thirsty. And Samson asks God a question. He says, have you allowed me to kill 10,000 men and I die of thirst? Have you? Did you allow me to make lemon walk, open blind eyes, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and then they get me somewhere and then I'm just... Hey! I don't think whether you understand what I'm saying. You allowed me to stand before people and preach the gospel to them. Am I going to die on the altar? Are they going to speak about me and say that this guy raised the dead, cleansed the lepers, healed the sick, got many souls to Christ, and now I fall fast? And he says, and I fall before these uncircumcised men. Let me tell you. The more people hate you, the more God affirms and confirms. You didn't get it. The more people hate you, the more God tells you. It's the more confirmation. And then you say, what about those who failed? They didn't believe this. They didn't believe this. Me, I believe it. Me, I believe it. Now, go back to that scripture. The Bible tells us that he was a sore thirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given me this great deliverance into the hand of thine servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. And the Bible says, But, 
Underline. But. Italicize. Underline. Bold. He says, but. God cleft a hollow place. That was in the jaw. And there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again. And he revived. Wherefore, the Bible says, he called the name thereof Enhakore. Now, the Hebrew word of Enhakore is the spring of those which are cold. <laughs> eh? Eh? The spring of the cold. In other words, if you know you're called of God. If you know you're called of God. There is a spring for you when you're thirsty. There is hope for you when you're broken. There is deliverance for you when you're stressed. There is revival for you when you're depressed. There is... Ask someone, are you called of God? What does the message Bible say? The message Bible says, and God... Message. Message. Okay, he's so fast. And God split open the rock. Not a rock, the rock. Not a rock, the rock. Not a rock, the rock. The city is keeping. Not a rock, the rock. Not a rock, the rock. Not a rock, the rock. Let me tell you something. If you were really called of God, He has provided a spring to get you out. One time I found a man of God and he told me, Apostle, I don't know whether I'll preach. I've been so heat. And I asked him, Were you called of God? And he told me, Yes. And I told him, Man of God, sober up. Put on your tie and suit. Grenta in church. Whether there are two members, open the Bible and preach. There's a spring coming for you. Recently, he sent me a message. The Lord has rebuilt him again. That is called grace. Njakumalako. I don't know how to say that in English. It's sweeter in Luganda. Njakumalako. Tell your neighbor, Njakumalako. <laughs> I know who called me. I know my end. Do you know what it means to go through too much? And at the end, some people say, this is God. No, they don't say, she, she finished well. No, they just say, ah, this one. That is my prayer for your life. That may something happen in your life. I don't know what you've gone through. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what they've said about you. I don't know what the economy says. I don't know how you sleep. How small the room is. Whether you had lunch or you didn't. But may it be hard one day. From another man and not you. Saying that when I look at the life of this man of God. It is God. Some of you have not been tried. But some of us have been tried. (laughs) <laughs> some of us have been tried you enter into something and you're sure only God can take you out do you understand what I'm saying I'm not talking about things where you can call a cousin sister a certain guy in government a connection in, I, I'm talking of that place where you enter something and you look back and say if it is not the Lord of Sabaoth to take me out of this, I cannot come out. And then it takes you out. You made a way. Who knows that song? You Uh-huh, I want to hear it. Uh-huh. When up against the law, and it seems as if it was all so you made a way. So I'm standing here only because you may tell him you made a way. Say you 
led away. Uh-huh. When a box were against the wall, and it looks as if he was over, but you may oh So I'm standing here only because you may tell him you met away when a box were against the road and it looks as if he was over so you met away so I'm standing here only because you met sing it one more time tell him Lord you you man Telling you that way So I'm standing in here only because you may tell him Lord you And I box one against the wall And it looked as if it was over Lord, you went away So I'm standing here Only because you went away Do I have a witness? Now when you look at your life you realize if it was not for God to make a way, you are not going to come out. If it was not for God to be on your side, your enemies would have destroyed you. If it was not for God to say you will live, even if the doctor says that you're going to die. Have you been through a situation and you don't even know how morning is going to come and that morning comes and night comes again and morning comes and night again and then you look back and God made a way he made a way tell somebody I know my end even in what may come in my future I know that he is the way he is the truth and he is the life nobody gets to the father except by through him he made a way. He made a way. And he will make a way. He will make a way. He says, no temptation that has befallen us, save that which is common unto man. But God says, but he will, with the temptation, the very trial, if the same thing, that he won't, he won't put, no, in the same thing, while you're going through it, he says, he will in the same, with the same temptation, he says, also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. There is nothing you're going through that you can't handle. I don't care whether the doctors can't handle it. God can handle it. I don't care whether the government cannot handle it. God can handle it. I don't care whether nobody around you can handle it. God can handle it. I don't care whether nobody understands you. God can handle it. God can handle it. Tell somebody God can handle it. Tell somebody God can handle my situation. He can handle your situation. However bad it looks, he can handle your situation. He can handle your situation. He can handle. He can handle. I don't know who I'm talking to. You know, I want to go to my next point, but I have to tell somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to. You will make it. He knew you were not the wisest, but he chose you. He knew you were not the most perfect, but he chose you. He that began a good work in your life. He will see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. He knows your life. He knows where you're going. He knows what you've gone through. He understands you more than anybody will ever understand you. It's not their opinions that matter. It's his opinion toward you. He said, before I formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I called you. 
I called you. If you know I called you, there's a spring for you somewhere. If you know I called you, there's something that will sprout out in the desert. I will make your desert blossom somehow in one way or another. I will rest you in sure dwellings. Come what may, whether the sun will shine or the blistering cold will heat. Either way, one day you will wake up and you're through it. And you're going to look back and many will look at you and wonder, if this is not God, who can it be? When God delivered the children of Israel from the hand of Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 15, the Bible says Moses sang a song. He says, who is like you, Lord? Our enemies made up their minds and says, we shall turn you. We shall kill you, hurt you, and flip you. But all oh Lord, you covered them with a flood. And none of them survived their life. Why? Because you are God. Who is like you? Who is like you? Who is like you? There is none like him. Somebody said there is none like him. Say it again and say there is none like him. The ninth verse says in 15, I think, he says, and, hey, 15, the Lord, he says, not verse 9, he says, the enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide, my lust shall be satisfied upon them, I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. And the Bible says, but you blew them with your wind. Chino kancho kere mugaanda, ofanga kukatonda nga yefu idomundu. Na mujambula mubo no muno nyanga tachala bika. Nga yalingo wa manye yali asomoro kumenya. Neru muno kera no tunule mabega. Nga yalinga yali na manye la kubula mubo. Tachala galina. Na atenga goni na manye kubula mubo. Let me translate it. There are people in this world who think they have power over your life. But a time comes when God can do something and the men which think they were to determine your future, you're standing and determining their future. The men which threaten to fire you, you look back and you're the one hiring them. I remember in my first job, a certain man looked at me one day and he said, I don't like you. And because I have much favor with the boss, the guy told me, I'll do everything to make sure that I put you in your place. And I remember telling God, you had him. You had him. It took about one year. And he went to do witchcraft on my boss. And when he went, the Lord carried my spirit into the shrine. And I saw everything he did. And I confused him that night. The next morning, I went at the woman's house, at the end of the past, and I told her, my boss, and I told her, this guy did witchcraft last night on you, and I know you won't believe me, but here is the proof. He's going to disappear for many months out of the blue. The guy disappeared for many months out of the blue. A spirit of confusion sat on him, and he disappeared. After about five or six months, Things hit him that side. He comes back. The day he did witchcraft was the day spirit of confusion sat on him and he just walked and disappeared. He returns back after six months or seven. And my boss calls me and tells me, you're the man of God who saw him and you proved and he disappeared and it's true. Now he has come back. He wants back his job. What should I do? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, Fetuli Balala. We are children of the Most High. He that touches me touches the pupil of God's eye. Tell them you cannot kick against the bricks. Hey! And I extended grace. And I told my boss, forgive him. And then they rehired him. And I told him, next time you go to a witch doctor, I'll kill you. He told me, I'm sorry. I know who I am. Tell somebody I know who I am. Of course I was scaring him. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord somebody. Somebody say hallelujah. He said, let's go back to the scripture before I finish. He told him that in Exodus, 
He told him, I have set his heart against you. Exodus chapter 10. And the second verse says, Exodus chapter 10 verse 2. He says, Exodus chapter 10 verses 2. That thou may still, do you hear that? I've set Pharaoh against you. I've had in his heart against you. That you will tell. I've allowed people to frustrate you. That you will tell. If I've allowed that disease to get, if I've allowed it, you will tell. You have a story to tell. If I allowed you to sleep in a one-roomed house, that you will tell. That you will tell. He says that you may tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's sons that which I have wrought in Egypt. He says, and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know how that I am the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The next verse says, And Moses and Aaron came into the Pharaoh and said unto him, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before God? Release his people. Why? Because God had spoken to them that the moment I allow anything to afflict you in this life, it's for you one day to tell a story. There are things some of you can never... There are, there are things that you can stand on the pulpit and talk and an unbeliever just believes. We want things like that. Where you tell people... You, you know, there are people who go through things. Huh? Sometimes I look at ministers and, and, and I sit down with the guy and say, suppose I'm stressed. And I just tell this guy, man of God, he will make it. But you see, I'm not telling them because I have no words to tell them. No. I am telling them from the experience of what I've seen in the spirit. And I can tell them that there is always a way for a believer. You'll come out. That is why he says the things that you see are temporal. They are only but for a moment. And they work for you a far exceeding weight of glory. Yet they are temporal. They are light afflictions. They are but for a moment. These things you're going through, they're temporal. That is why if you're on a border, enjoy it. Enjoy your border, border. Because the time will come when you're driving a huge car. And you tell a man, I once sat on a border, border. Even now, I remember those days, Pastor. They call you on a conference. You sit on a border, Gerenge Kauku, focus. You reach the grounds. Guys have packed MLs, Mercedes Benzes, right? Range Rovers. What? And for you, you come off a border. And your car, your car neck is all full of brown. Your eyes are brown. You're like, you're like those, those baby girls. Those dolls our kids have. You understand what I'm saying? And then you get a hunky. And then you do the hunky like this. And it looks like copper girl. And then you put it down and tell them. <laughs> how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And how he went about doing good and healing all of them that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. I have something to tell you tonight. Raise your hands. And some of them raise. And others, they're like, the preacher. <laughs> Those days used to sleep under a, a table. But inside, something was telling you. You understand what I'm saying? You wake up in the morning, and you want to brush your shoe. And then you see two holes on your shoe. Are you hearing me? Then you put more most shoe polish on the one with the hole. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Praise God. That they will think it's more polish. Then it's the hole. You put on a, a trouser. And then somehow it gets a little line and it gets cut a bit down there. And when you see it cut, you take it to another guy. And then you tell him, reduce the side and sew it a bit higher. And, and they think you're putting on fitting. Kumbe, you're surviving. Hallelujah. And then you stand in front of people and you tell them, for my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ. And the people who are looking at you, they say, you look mad. And you console yourself. You tell them the gospel is foolishness to them which are perishing. I am not ashamed of the gospel of salvation. For it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew and to the Gentile. The Jew that seeks a sign. The Gentile that seeks wisdom. I mean the Greek that seeks wisdom. He says, Christ is the wisdom and the power which is of God. Praise God. You ignore your shirt. It gets to a point where it gets over ironed. 
that even when you wash it, the lines are permanent. <laughs> Nenga, there is something inside telling you. One day you wake up in a suit. You'll enter your closet and change them. How many of you you come from far? You're not dot com. You're not microwave. You're not digital. You're analog. You come from far like me. When you come to the corner of your face, if it was not for the Lord, <laughs> you know there are some people say, I had the Lord, but I had an auntie in Cincinnati. I had the Lord, but I had a cousin in Sacramento. No. Some of us didn't have cousins. They were in Mawokola. He did not bring you this far to leave you. He has not brought you this far for you to die of thirst. You will... Hey! I'll make it. Tell your neighbor I'll make it. And as truly as the Lord is in Joshua chapter 2. You remember Joshua chapter 2? A testimony comes through. You remember how he promised that they will tell their children and their children's children? Let's open Joshua chapter 2. Verses 9. Joshua chapter 2. Verses 9. If you're there, you say amen. Joshua chapter 2 verses 9. You remember the time when Joshua, the son of Nun, okay, let's begin from verse 1. The son of Nun of Shittim sent two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land over Jericho. And they went, even Jericho, even and went and, and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged in there. You remember Rahab? And the Bible tells us in the third verse, And it was stolen, and the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they have become to search out on all the country. Remember during that was the time when they wanted to what? To eat the land. You remember? And the Bible says, And the woman took the two men and hid them and said, Thus there came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for he shall overtake them. So Rahab acted like the guys had escaped. You remember? And the next verse says, and she, she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of, uh, of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan and to the forts, for she lied. Of course, she told them that they have rain, yet they had not escaped yet. And soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And the next verse says, and before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And then she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. I know. Why? That your terror has fallen upon us. And he says, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. And the next verse says, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. How he dealt, dealt with those people who tried to destroy you. How he promoted you when they wanted to fire you. How he got you a better job the day they fired you. How they wrote about you and then he flipped you out and uh, killed them to be liars. And he says, we know what you did unto the kings of the Amorites. That they were on the other side, Jordan, Shihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And then she says, and as soon as we have heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is the God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. This is, a, this is an unbeliever. Talking about your God. Because they see how you came out. He says, as soon as we had these things, our hearts melt. And the next verse says in, in 12, he says, now therefore I pray, swear unto me, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. And he says, preserve our lives from death. Now, God did something in the lives of the children of Israel. Are you hearing me? That 
it started to be talked about. To a point one time, they are trying to enter into another commitment to protect Jericho. And there are people in Jericho who know that when an Israelite comes, you remember how he does his things. May God do something in your life. That every place you will enter, the hearts of men will melt to open for the gospel that is within you. God can do something in your life that even those that find you fear and they say because you did this there is no who cannot cover you. Because the Lord did this through you. We know what cancer did to you and how it came out of your body. I tell you I prayed for, with Kelly Kikon. He had HIV. The doctor gave his life to Christ. He told the guy, he asked him, what do you use? The young man told him, Ripo kose kete. Rimande zikeleba. Rika torobaye. Setereba. Praise God. Recently, some of you remember the story in Kenya. A woman had a cancer. Jen Karutai. And I called her. I was in Uganda. She's a friend of mine. That woman was the first woman to give me a car when I entered Nairobi. The first day I entered Nairobi, she surrendered her car. And I was driving it around. And we became friends. It had been about four or five years since I last went to Nairobi. And I get a vision in the spirit and this woman is sick. So I call her. I said, Jen, what is happening? And then she told me, Nothing, I'm well. I told her, you're not well. She said, no, I'm well. I insisted, you're not well. She said, I'm well. I told her, Jen, I'm a man of God. You can't lie to me, you're not well. And she tells me, okay, it's true. I have a cancer in the highest stages. My breast is eaten. And I'm in hospital right now. And I told Jen, let's pray. We prayed that day. That God had the cancer healed, the breast grew. Some of you were in Nairobi when she was testifying. The man of God inviting me stood on that pulpit and said, We want you to speak to us about your God because I knew Jane and I know her now. Her breast grew. Tell us about this God. May God do something in your life. That will cause men to ask. Who is this God you worship? Ladies and gentlemen. The cancer didn't just leave. And a fresh breast grew. That's the God I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the minister of foreign affairs. Huh? I'm not talking about a survivor. I'm talking of the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I want to assure you, whatever you're going through, and you will go through, you will tell with a testimony. That is what I believe. That is what the Bible says in Hebrews. For we remember the faith of Rahab. And he says, The heart of Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. The Bible says, She perished not with them. She perished not with them. She perished. Even the people who bless you, God will preserve them. Because they, 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 they blessed a man who went through. That is why sometimes when I find people and they say, I was in stretch for cancer and I was healed. Sometimes I just have to get a seed and segue. There is something on you I want. Why? Because if you made it, I can only honor it. I can only honor the God who allowed you to go through. Now I'm prophesying upon your life in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus that it is well with you. I want you to raise your hands in the air. The Spirit of God 
is doing a very mighty work right now in the name of Jesus. I see the hand of God delivering men out of things nobody can deliver you out. I see a separation of the Holy Spirit that is anointing you past what you're going through. And the Bible says, and the yoke shall be broken because of the fatness of the anointing. Some of you, God is anointing you above that situation. Holy Spirit, I ask you, in the name of Jesus, start to deliver your people. I see a power of God on this ground right now that is delivering some of you that is delivering people out of things you never thought you would come out of. There's a young lady here. It's not supposed to be, but it is so that a certain spirit comes and uses you. It has been using and using and using and using and using you. Right now in the name of Jesus. God delivers anything married to you. If it is not a man. In the name of Jesus. Witchcraft is destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Regression is destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Poverty is a spirit. I see God deliver somebody I see something breaking off your life and you're going to feed nations oh my god oh my god you're going to feed nations I'm not talking about survival I'm talking of something God can place on you and everybody on you know and sees everybody around you can recognize that the hand of the Lord is upon you. There are people here. You were tired of the level at which you minister. That level in its own has been a burden. It has been a hindrance. Are you ready in the name of Jesus? May God separate you for higher planes of ministry. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. There's a lady in blue. Is it blue? Brown lady with a black wrist, a black uh, watch on your left. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Somebody start to speak in tongues right now. Conceive something and give birth to something. Tonight you give birth to something. Say, I'm coming out of disease. I'm coming out struggle. I'm coming out. I am coming out. I am coming out. Because I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly presence of Christ. The manifestation takes place right now in my life. For my children. For my children's children. I want to decree upon your life. Your end is of the Lord. Speak in other tongues. Create something. You have two minutes. Create something. Rapatala labels. Speak in other tongues. Come on, speak in other tongues. Create something. Create something. The Bible says that he that speaketh in tongues <laughs> edifieth himself and speaks mysteries unto God.
praise. You are the one we adore. You can give the healing and grace. So praise hunger for. Tell him you're the one. Come on, speak to God. Make this personal. You are we adore. You give the healing and praise. So praise and love. Give me that lady with an unlimited T-shirt. I need to pray for like three or four people. Yeah, come. You're the one. I want you to put up your hands. Put up your hands. Receive it. You are the one. We adore. We give the healing and praise. And the heart so Receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh. Tell him you're the one. Receive it in the name of Jesus. We are so Put up your hands. Receive it in the name of Jesus. You're the one. That we pray. Something is happening. I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me. Uh, in just about two minutes or less, I feel there is an anointing coming upon certain people I don't know what it is but I have to warn you in advance I can't describe it but the partakers of it know it depending on what they've asked God Holy Spirit I thank you I don't have a name for it but there are people who have prayed and the Spirit of the Lord has told me that He's going to release an anointing now and that anointing it's defined by what they've prayed. I also don't know what it is. I don't know what they've asked God for. All I know is that as a man of God, the heavens are open. And there is an anointing falling on people according to what they've asked. I don't have a definition for it. But I can feel that it is heavy. But in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I want you to bring them in front here. Bring them in front. Bring them in front. Bring them in front. Carry them. Carry them here. Carry them here. Carry them. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Carry them here. Now, I want you to take only 30 seconds and clap for God like you believe everything that you have spoken upon your life is manifesting now come on clap for Jesus clap for Jesus clap for Jesus clap for Jesus celebrate like something has happened in your life Don't put them so near 
each other. There's some place to strike. Come on, tell somebody it is working in my life. Turn to the other neighbor and tell them it is working in my ministry. It is working in my body. It is working in my eyes, in my vision. I am going somewhere. Tell somebody I'm going somewhere. Come what may, I will beat it. I swear I will defeat it. Because I'm more than a conqueror. Through Christ which strengthens me. Where I he that is in me. than he that is in the world. Listen. Don't ever. I'm talking to somebody. Don't ever underestimate. What the anointing can do. I don't know who I'm talking to. I can pull you out if I want. But let me make it a general one. Don't underestimate what the anointing of the Holy Spirit can do. Yokes break because of that fatness of the anointing. Don't take light what the anointing of the Holy Spirit can do. Some of you, you're rejecting what you need. Praise God. You're rejecting what you need. Hallelujah. If you're here, now give me only two minutes and we close. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ and you're saying, tonight I want to receive the Lord as my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus. I want you to put up your hands. You want to be born again? Come, come. Tell them to come here. Just give me two minutes. Let nobody leave this ground. Receive the Lord Jesus. Receive the Lord Jesus. Ask your immediate neighbor, are you born again? If they are not born again, tell them go now. Let's give it only two minutes. Lord Jesus. Wow. Aren't you happy that men are coming to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus? I want you to repeat these words after me, those of you who have come. You know, every time I see young people come to Christ, I know where Uganda is going. There is hope. Pastors, there is hope. Praise God. I want you to repeat these words after me. I want you to say, I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins and rose again for my glorification you are the son of God who gave his life for me tonight I receive you and confess with my mouth that you are savior and lord of my life I am born again Amen The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International.
For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at funerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. Thank you.